Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Quasimorph, shall we? Picking up where we left off with our complete beginner's guide. And so we've completed the kind of first little tutorial with the jerks boarding our space ship, and now it's time to get into the kind of open aspect of the game. So in the upper right, you're going to see that time is indeed moving, um, and for the moment that's not an, a problem. Now we're in the orbit of Phobos, so that's our location in the upper right, and I think this number five corresponds to how many little things there are to do here. So these yellow um, entities are uh, missions, and then these are uh, Orphan and Hypnos 2. These are places, a mining base and a colony, where you can trade with a faction. So they've changed some things in this update. So, for example, like at the mining base, it's peaceful, and it's owned by Civil Resistance, which is one of the factions in the game. And um, you can see what they will trade for down at the bottom of the picture. And then you can get an indication of what they will give you by um, going to the stock exchange button in the bottom left. So <laughs> this, they're going to be continuously working on how trade works and functions and all that jazz um, in the future. But right now what happens is you, let's, let's say um, I was going to, the colony is actually trading more stuff. Um, they want more things. I don't have any of those things, those icons there anyway. But if I wanted, like, let's say I had this stuff that the mining base was interested in. And I went to the stock exchange. So from the stock exchange, you can see uh, the different factions here. And they're listed by their names. And they're organized by power level. So this number is like their relative power level. And if I click on Civil Resistance, for example, who is trading at the mining base, you could see that this is their power level, 550. This is my relationship with them. It's bad. These are the people that just boarded my ship and tried to kill me. It's negative 17 there. Um, but you can build this. I don't know how much of this is actually in play at the moment in the early access status in terms of like the dynamics between the different factions and how you build reputation and relationships and how they interact with each other and how power level actually plays out. Uh, but what we want to focus on for now is down at the bottom. So you see here where it says um, rewards and exchange in the bottom right. This is what they will give you if you can trade with them. Now, people will only, there's no money. It's all the barter system. So people will only accept items that they're looking for to trade with. So you need to have those items and you could pick them up uh, when you're on a mission. And then when you trade to them, they give you a reward and it's randomized. So it's a roguelike, there's random loot. And these are their kind of like breakdown of the percentage chances of you to get each piece of gear. So for example, there's like a 16% chance that we get the armored jacket and you know a 4% chance that we get this nail gun. And most of the stuff that they give us is actually garbage. Um, so not only is this stuff bad, but this stuff we can find on dead bodies of civil resistance people if we need to. So there's nothing here that's like super exciting. But if you go to um, Sunlight Coven, for example, or Coven, um, you see that they have a 30% chance to drop mine chips and 30% chance to drop combat tactic chips. Chips are ways that you can unlock new classes, new clones, new blueprints uh, for crafting stuff. So uh, let's see here. This right here, this basic item chip, you don't know what it's going to be, but if you get it, it can help you learn the recipe to craft something. So you want to, at least in my opinion, prioritize doing missions that can give you rewards, potentially, that you could trade with people that have chips 
so that you could build up your account. Remember, this is a rogue light. So what happens is you learn blueprints, you learn new classes, you learn, you know, new skills, um, get new clones and stuff like that. And what that means is you can have more choices when you're going into the business of taking on missions and, and be more selective and do more stuff. But also, um, it's really, really useful to look at, let's just say, for example, you're using energy weapons. These people drop energy weapons and provide energy ammunition. And ammunition um, is actually pretty important until you can um, reliably craft it. So ammo could be really good. If you trade with the Church of Revelation, they give you alcohol and guns, but they also give you chips. So the stock exchange shows you the different factions. It shows you the exchange rate, and it shows you um, just your overall status. So we've done one mission. We've killed nine humans, zero quasimorphs, and zero barons. So you can, um, for example, with um, the mining base in the upper right, you, you mouse over it, you see what they want, and if you're not sure what the icon is, you can come into the stock exchange, you can go here, and you can just kind of scroll through until you see something that looks like that, and here it is, it's food. So they want food, but they want food containers. So food containers are a different thing that you can collect while on a mission. Containers you, you could find for all sorts of different types of items, and you can bring them back whole to trade, or you can open them up during a mission to collect food, for example, or whatever resource type they have if you need it on the go. So you kind of have to make a decision on the fly of what you need. Do you need to have food? Are you starving? Or can you save it to try to trade? Now over here, um, the colony. So this is Sunlight Coven that we looked at. And Sunlight Coven, uh, if I click on them, we don't really have any relationship with them. We're kind of neutral. And they are really good at providing chips. They can also give you some sweet... Mr. Meaty Burgers and some cola, just some, you know, rifles and guns and stuff. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have, you know, the gold bars and the stuff that they need. And we're not going to have very much of that at all because we haven't done missions. So we don't need to trade at the moment. But if you do want to trade, you just click on Hypnos 2 and it automatically opens up the trade window. And if you have anything that they want... Down here in the bottom right where it says Station Cargo, this exchange button and these arrows, they will turn on. So, like, you can just click this uh, right arrow and everything from your inventory that these people want will automatically load on here. And then you could click Exchange. And when you click Exchange, you will get loot from that random loot table uh, with the probabilities listed on the Stock Exchange screen for that faction. So uh, that kind of sounds complicated, I guess, but we'll look at it when that becomes important. Right now, though, what we want to do is check over here on the left. And all of these icons tell us different missions that are out there. So SBN is taking a keen interest in what's going on in Canaan Terminal on Phobos. Corward MG is afraid of espionage actions carried out by PMCs. So these are all different little missions that people want you to do. So like this key icon is an espionage kind of mission. And then um, this sword icon means like kill people. So that's taste of revenge if we want it, which we probably do. And you can see where these missions are. Now, some of these missions um, are on Mars, but then some of them are in other locations. And so in order to go to other locations besides where we are, which is in the orbit of Phobos, you can click on M or click on the system map, and you can see here's where we are, Mars, um, and we're on one of Mars's moons, which is Phobos, um, and there's another moon here, uh, Deimos, but you can also go to, you know, Earth's system, and you can go to Venus, um, etc. Now, I don't want to go anywhere besides Mars right now, because... As I explained in the previous video, if you're in the system of Mars, you don't have to deal with quasimorphs. And this is a great place as a beginner to just focus on standard combat, learning the basics before you have to throw in quasimorphs to the mix. Because they do add 
difficulty and complexity. So the other thing you might want to do before you select a mission is click on spacecraft or I. Uh, the capacity of our mother spacecraft allows us to produce items directly on board. To produce most simple items, we only need a licensed chip. There are examples in history of how one corporation tried to in introduce an additional fee for each item produced, but as a result of the Six-Day War, the corporation went bankrupt and all the others refused such monetization. Okay, so um, basically I think what they're saying is there really is no... Uh, we, we have to produce and trade stuff. There's no currency, maybe, is what Jane is explaining. Anyway, what you're going to see is in the upper left, you can produce items. And it takes time. Remember how I said time was passing. Time passes really quickly if you're traveling through space or you know doing other things. But let's just click right here. Production in this empty slot. And here's all the stuff that we already know how to craft. And if we don't have the item like plastic, it'll be red. And if we do like thread and rags, which we got from disassembling stuff, we can make some things. So, for example, early on, we know how to make 9mm bullets, and we know how to make buckshot, uh, but we need powder, which we can get from disassembling ammunition. Uh, oh no, we can make 42 bullets as well. Can we make any other bullets? You could sort, by the way. You could just click ammo. No, we only know how to make three. Okay, so... The main thing that I like to look at early would be first aid kit is pretty good. Uh, bandages are good. So I'm going to click on bandage. Better than just rags. So we click on it and then we say make one start production because that's all we can make. And it's going to take six hours of game time to do that. Now I'm not too worried about crafting at the moment, but this is what you want to be doing. You want to make sure that you're crafting stuff. Nothing happens instantly. It happens as time passes. So you want to queue these up so that your ship is working on things while you're traveling or doing missions. Now, over here where it says cargo, this is all the stuff I have. I have a lot of stuff. So the game starts you pretty well stocked up with some basic equipment, which is great. So these badges are current missions. And all of the dialogue or the flavor text where it says MTZ Moon is under attack by a PMC... Sunlit Coven is blaming civil resistance for the attack. All of this usually, and I think it's random, are describing like just political tensions between the factions, just squabbles that they have, and you can take sides and, you know, play favorites and see how they play out. But usually, I don't personally pay attention to it too much. What it means is it just gives you a vague. Uh, explanation of why this is happening and we're mercenaries so we're just trying to make some money and survive and we'll do you know whatever if the price is right and we'll help whoever benefits us is kind of the attitude that I have so I don't really care what their reasoning is um, I'm just like all right is it does it seem like a good mission maybe I'll do it at least at this stage of the game so speaking of is it a good mission we have three mission choices we can do um, this espionage mission, this espionage mission, or uh, Taste of Revenge. I'm going to go ahead and start right here with this espionage mission. Now, you'll see that if you mouse over a mission, it tells you who the owner is. And the owner of the mission is important because they give you a reward if you complete the mission that is from the loot table that's the same as their trading loot table. So if you, it's core word MG, we just push H to open the stock exchange, and we can look at core word MG down here, and they have a 18% chance to give us class chips, 18% chance to give us mine chips, and then they have some other stuff that they can give us. So that's actually a pretty good opportunity to get some chips. So that's fine, you know, they're the mining group. And uh, we have 26 days left before this mission goes away, which is reflected in the time up here. This one goes away in 27 days. So we have like a month. We have plenty of time. This taste of revenge does not go away. So um, do we want to get revenge right away or do we want to do a mission right now? Well, I was going to do this and I was going to do this because... Um, you know, there's only one skull difficulty. The reward seems reasonable. This one is a three skull difficulty. 
Sometimes the skulls for difficulty, the red skulls out of five, do not actually reflect how hard it is. It, it's kind of not always obvious. Like, sometimes I'll take a four skull mission and it's easy. Sometimes it's one skull and it's harder than I thought. But by and large, I still look at it and use it. And it reflects the amount of reward. So that number on the reward, 1251, <laughs> all I know about when I look at that is the bigger the number, the more the reward. So like effectively, this is three skull difficulty. It's giving three times the reward that this mission is giving. And it's from the loot table. These are... Um, this is Planet Bridge. Um, and oh wait, never mind. Um, I looked at the, I read this wrong. The owner of the area is Corward, the mining group, but the beneficiary is SBN. And so I believe we will get loot from SBN instead, which is up here. And um, they have a good chance to give you item chips and energy stuff. We already looked at them. So sorry, I, I read that wrong. It's um, this one is Corward, and it's owned by Planet Bridge. So it's kind of like you're taking an action against Planet Bridge for the benefit of Corward MG. They're hiring you. So, um, oh, while I was talking, item bandage produced. We made the item. So I'm going to click on Rogue City and do the taste of revenge. Let's get some revenge. Great. I'm glad that honor is not just an empty word to you, boss. Just in case. Yeah, because I didn't want to let Francis down. By the way, Francis is the clone that we were playing as in the tutorial. I'll remind you about the standard mission preparation interface. On this screen, you choose the operative who will go on the mission, the chip with the combat skills that will be integrated into the freshly printed clone, and the equipment that we will issue to the fighter for the mission. Okay. Now, um, I don't know how to describe the technology, but... The way I think of it is, the clone is freshly printed Printed if you died. But if you didn't die, then the clone is still alive and retains its experience. So, this is the screen that you'll get when you take a mission. You come here, it tells you the title of the mission at the top. It says, Rogue City Station's Autonomous Missile Defense Server must be destroyed. So we'll go after their missile defense system. And it gives you some details down here, uh, which is like flavor text... And just some extra information. Rogue City is a charging and repair terminal for ground vehicles and at the same time serves as corporate colony that brings constant dividends for rent to its owner. So what, one of the things I actually really like about Quasimorph is that it provides a lot of story. And you feel like you're kind of, um, you know, in this living, breathing, terrifying space nightmare world in the future. And I like that. And there's a lot of story to read if you're interested. But you don't have to. You can just dive into the mission. Now, right here, a lot of these options are grayed out. We don't have much choice. Um, but we have to click right here in the center where it says Select Operator. This is the Bioprinter screen. Here you can choose a fighter to go on a mission. The list includes both those who survived previous missions and those who need to be printed. Right. Each of the fighters has their own parameters and unique talent. They have all been through a lot during years of combat in every corner of the solar system. So right now, we have Victoria, Percy, Isabella, and then Francis. And we can print somebody fresh. And if you look at Victoria, for example, you can see her base stats right here. And uh, you get an idea of what they're capable of. And you could compare them and see who you want to use. So like Victoria... She does 5 to 10 melee damage, 15 crit damage, which is the same. But then you start to see that, like, she's less accurate in melee, but she's more accurate overall. She has more dodge chance than Francis. Um, she can only fill her satiety up to 1,800 instead of 2,000. She has more range, visible range, not gun range, just visible range by one tile than Francis, which is good. But um, Francis has more pain threshold and her special trait is at the very bottom. She gets weapon range plus two. Whereas um, Francis gets weapon durability plus 120%. So um, let's just say we wanted to be Victoria. So we could be Victoria. Here she is. And then 
we'll be printing her fresh because we like the idea that she gets plus two range on her gun. We could select a class. This is the class selection screen. In addition to their own experience, each fighter will benefit from gaining a specific set of skills based on the experience of past military conflicts and digitized experience of special forces. Each class has a set of passive abilities and trigger abilities that are activated under certain conditions. So we were a scout of Hades before, but we could also be Eclipse Blade. You could click on it and just look at it, Eclipse Blade. Now, Eclipse Blade is like more about... Um, this is Victoria. This is not Eclipse Blade, the top center. It's more about melee stuff. And I got to tell you what. I have not. Melee can be good. But there are certain enemies. We probably won't encounter them on this mission. But some enemies, for example, explode uh, when they die. And that could complicate matters. Closing distance also leaves you open for taking damage. So I usually like shooting guns at least at the beginning until I get really situated um, as opposed to melee. I find melee to be um, more difficult, but that's just me. So I'm going to, instead of making her an eclipse, I'm going to make her a scout, just like Francis. So we'll have all of the skills that we saw in the previous mission here, but they start at zero, which is fine. Francis isn't that much further along. We'll select the class. Now you get to select equipment down here. You need to gather your equipment. Take whatever you deem necessary, but don't forget ammo, food, and medical supplies. Note that if the operative you send dies in battle, all the items will be lost, and evacuation is only possible when the mission is completed or we find something valuable like a new consciousness chip. Okay. Oh, I kind of thought you kept some of the items, so I must have, I misspoke in the previous video. Uh, you lose everything, apparently, when you die. That they, But you keep everything that's on the ship that you don't take, but you lose everything that the operative had. I thought that if memory serves, like you, when the person dies, there's like a a bag of their stuff or something that you get that when you start again, that has some of the things, but maybe I'm just remembering that wrong. So what do we want to take? All right. Well, first things first, we need to get a backpack and we want the biggest backpack that we've got. Now, you start out with one 6x3 backpack. I'm going to put it on. This is amazing. We want more of these. If we die, we lose it, which sucks. So we don't want to die. But we have a 6x3, which will give us plenty of space. And she has good range. And I'm going to take a shotgun. So uh, let's see what shotguns we have. We have uh, the assault rifle, the semi-automatic, the Taija. I'm going to take one shotgun right here, okay? There's um, a Jeff Hammer shotgun, which I like a lot better, but we have to find it. We don't have it yet. I'm going to give her this, and as my piece of advice, I like to carry two types of weapons. So we have a shotgun, and I'll go ahead and also carry something smaller and light. Uh, for example, hmm... What is this? One kilogram, two kilograms. This is 20. How many self-loading pistol? Yeah, I'll take this. Uh, self-loading pistol like that. So she's got two weapons. We're going to go ahead and get a mag vest um, right here. And let's take some ammo. So we're using a shotgun and you can mouse over the semi-automatic shotgun at the bottom of the window for this you'll see all of the different ammo types that it can take all of these shells and right now we just have buckshot so i'll take buckshot i'm gonna take another one and this uses nine millimeter so i'll take nine millimeter and i'm gonna take another one so i'm taking all of our ammo for these weapons which is you know we don't want to die, but I don't want to just run out of bullets when I'm on the mission. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have this many bullets. Okay, now it's time to consider our armor situation. And Francis has some armor, but she doesn't. we don't have any backup armor for her. So we're going to have to give her just like basic stuff. 
uh, you can control click to put these things on jeans, shoes, and a balaclava. There. So we're good. Oh, did I not put on my shoes? Which ones do I want? No, I want these. There. Put on these boots. Okay, so I have my backpack, my mag vest, two weapons. I have balaclava, like I have a armor on every slot. Now it's time to get our health items. So I'm going to take bandages. I don't want to take them all, though. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to divide the stack, and I'm going to just take two. And I'm going to take, I'm going to divide this stack, and I don't want to take two. I'm going to take one of these first aid kits. We need food. These babies are 1,200 um, calories, so I'll take these. Uh, my backup stuff went down here. Where did that extra... Here, it went up here. Okay. Okay, so... I'm just going to organize it just visually. So we have ammo. We have first aid stuff. We need to splint. All right, I have bandage, splint, and you want to take um, antibiotics because you don't want to die from being infected or poisoned. It's awful. So this looks good. I'm actually pretty reason Like, I'm okay with this. What do we have right here? We have one first aid kit, we have two bandages, we have two splints, and we have two antibiotics. Now, if you really wanted, you could take uh, some armor kits to repair, some gun uh, kits to repair your gun, um, armors, boxes. Uh, you know what? The water is not a bad idea. Sure, fine. And... If you want to take grenades or something, I don't really need it. I'm okay. Uh, oh, we did get some a transformer. This is for trading. But everything that I'm going to click sort in the upper right, you could just click this to sort it. And everything that I see here looks pretty good. I'm okay with this. I don't really care about quasimorphosis because we're on Mars. Um, this is for healing nicotine addiction and uh, get, getting rid of pain, but this is okay. I could take this. If I was, like, really serious about protecting myself as a item that would cure everything, basically. And it's not a bad idea. I don't have any... Yeah, I'm going to take it, just to be really safe. I usually like to take... I don't have any Dr. Jones or any kind of upgraded medical kits... There's better medical kits that you can get that will heal you instantly. Some of these just will heal you like they will put regeneration on you, but they don't heal you instantly. And that could be a disaster where you're like, um, I need to heal right now. So this guy uh, stabilizes the wound right away, puts on regeneration, which can be very, very helpful, heal shock. So uh, I think that's useful. I have a bunch of open slots. Good. Okay. I'm satisfied with this loadout. And you just click end to return. And then great. If you feel ready, it's time to start. Uh, press start mission. Okay. So, yes. We're going to be Victoria. We're going to be a scout. We've got our equipment. Here's our current weight. And you can see in the upper left now, this is her rank. She's a rookie. She's got zero missions complete. So, you know. That happened. Keep in mind that we're not getting paid for this. Taking a contract would have been a better idea. Jane doesn't like it. Civil Resistance has set up a field camp in Rogue City. Training complexes as well as some kind of medical facilities or laboratories. It's unclear. Sometimes messages flash in the CBN that terrorists are accumulating rare and valuable items. Weapons and equipment for their, quote, liberation struggle. Maybe we can justify the time spent here if we're lucky. So let's get even, but let's do it with benefit. Get to their anti-space defense complex and destroy it. After that, the pilots will direct Magnum to the cargo dock in Rogue City and will start loading everything that's lying there. Okay, so Jane's, you know, ever the capitalist. She wants us to make money. Our scanners see several ways to solve this problem. First, there is the main elevator connecting the cargo dock to the control center. 
but the number of biosignatures and the elevator is extremely high. Obviously, there's a quite strong security there. Secondly, there's a bypass route through the stairs and warehouse level. I would recommend using the second option as our main plan, but if you feel confident, you can act as you think best. So, what she's telling you is you can, like, be sneaky, and you could take the steps uh, and go to the warehouse level, or you can go to the control center straight up. So, let's bear that in mind. Now, I'm going to go ahead and right-click to turn things around. Okay. By the way, uh, let me show you some things I didn't explain in the previous video. Escape. Options. So, in the options, okay, um, you can turn off Jane's tips if you don't want them. And there's a bunch of options that you can toggle for quality of life. Now, the reason I was able to trade quickly is because I enabled fast trading. I think that this is enabled by default with the patch, but I'm not sure. It used to be the case that when you wanted to trade something, you had to land and you had to go walk and find the person and then trade with them. And in order to save time, they just let you fast trade, which is great. So I have this enabled. I also have skipped the shuttle arrival. So your shuttle arrival screen may have been lo longer than mine. It doesn't completely skip it, but it's a little bit longer if you don't skip it. I'd seen it so many times I'm fine with skipping it, but that was just where I was at. And uh, that's the only thing that I really have changed, I believe. You can always come here to see the key bindings for the stuff um, and adjust anything else that you're interested in. Okay. So... Um, information terminal, let's check it out. Recruit, welcome to Rogue City. This station was the tool of thieving vampires, sucking the juices from the free people of the solar system. It is now turned to the benefit of the working people. You made the right choice when you decided to leave your employer and then get to the nearest civilian resistance base by any means necessary. No more corporate slavery. You are to go through reintegration into organized society. Soon you will become a citizen again. Right now, you need to go to training class where you'll gradually start to learn what it means to become a full member of the Civil Resistance. I welcome you and thank you for making the right choice. Issahar. All right. So, you're going to get feedback and just some fun story from Civil Resistance if you click on these terminals because this is their training facility. It's not meant for us. We're here to kill them, to take revenge. Um, so, you know. I'm going to open the door. By the way, I got my shotgun selected, and um, I'm going to go with single fire. No, I'm not. I'm going to go for burst fire and see how it goes. Okay, so there's a bad guy over here. So you could see there is a fighter way back here, but... You notice how my line of fire to them, the green dots, start to turn yellowish-red as I get closer? That's because this enemy, I can hit them, but they are out of my optimal range. So I'm going to actually step up and step up again, and so are they. And why are they doing that? They have a nail gun. They need to get into range as well. Now we're in good range, so I can just shoot them. And that is a burst-fire shotgun. So shotguns are awesome in this game. I destroyed the beds. You can just lay waste to the environment, and I killed that guy. And um, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to go to single fire. Maybe I am overkilling. All right, the door. Is somebody back there? Did the door open because there's somebody, or did it just close because there's nobody? All right, I always look around to be sure. What you want to do with your fire mode is really pay attention. I need to reload my weapon. To... How many bullets you have overall? And if you start getting low on bullets, well, use a more economical bullet type. But what I do is use the burst fire because it kills things faster as long as I have the bullets to do so. All right, so here's a good backpack. It's damaged, though, but I'm going to take it just so I have a backup backpack. Now, she needs armor. She doesn't have good armor, so I'm going to start wearing all of the armor that these fools have. Oh, these are just regular jeans. These, no, these are gorilla. Yeah, give me, give me the good stuff. So, I, Jane does weigh a lot more, 
and we're losing two calories of satiety drain and our dodge is down but i like i just like having armor a lot at least some i'm gonna unload the ammo here and i am going to disassemble this and i'm just going to take apart everything that i've got and i'm going to take all of these bullets and there was another corpse oh no we can just disassemble this okay great where is the other corpse it's over here okay so um disassemble and we'll take um this gas mask is at better condition so i'll wear it uh this jacket's better condition so i'll do that and we're just going to go ahead and disassemble 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 and anything on the floor yeah there's some glass take everything so i'm already full up on crafting components um and I can't hold the bullets anymore. So what that means is I'm going to start dropping crafting components. I don't care about crafting stuff right now. Um, employee ID. Um, if you click on this, you'll see that this is a resource. This is a tradable item. Some people want this. So you can make money with this sometimes. So I'll pick it up and drop that on the ground. Looks like some rubber over here. Uh, there's a crude mechanism. Uh, this is a makeshift helmet, which isn't bad. Um, it's actually, in some ways, better because it resists pierce and cut, but it has no poison resist. So I'll just take it apart. Um, can I pick this up? So what this does is it fixes tools. I don't think we have any tools that we need to fix at the moment, but that's a cool item if we did. Some room nearby is an elevator. Be careful. The signature, signatures of uh, stationary turrets and heavily armored col uh, call nodes are clearly tracked there. Whatever kills them, kill you too. You are not special, and the equipment tends to run out. So yeah, so let's go ahead and just close the door by right-clicking on it. I don't need to go in there. There's stationary turrets. Remember, she said find a stairwell. So we're going to explore elsewhere. Here's the stairs. This stair leads to the warehouse premises. We have enhanced the resolution capability of the geoscanner. There's medical supplies and some other equipment there. Use everything, and you will easily reach the SD control center. So that's the route that we want to take. Now I'm going to kind of just keep exploring. You know, medical stuff. Okay. All right, bad guys all over. So what we want to do is shoot that person as a test. One shotgun took him down. This person is behind the wall cover. Now they are not. Aww. Alright, they're surviving. Now they are not. So, okay. Maybe I do want to go burst fire. Remember, you could switch, though, in battle. Alright, we're going to go ahead and um, unload the ammo disassemble uh, can't repair this stuff sadly we need better stuff go ahead and take everything apart okay so we're getting a good amount of ammo which is nice these shoes are better than ours. Can't hold any more 9mm bullets. You can also, though, take them apart. And it gives you powder. And this is what we want... Um, oh, fixes makeshift armor. Um, okay, so the rusty metal is what we want for these. Anything makeshift that we've got, anyway. So I'm going to take the powder, stack it up, 
and I'm going to get rid of, uh, okay. I didn't need to fix these boots, by the way, and you see the red on the bar. That means that the maximum durability of the item has been decreased. So there's like diminishing returns as you repair, repair, repair. But as soon as you get back to your ship after the mission, it will repair to full and the maximum durability will be restored. It's just kind of like for in the field um, to prevent you from just repairing every single time, I believe. Okay. And what are these items? Right, we don't need that. Alright, they shot and missed us. Now, if we shoot them, we're going to shoot through cover, but that's okay. There is a turret down there, which we don't want to see. I blew up the cover, which is funny. That guy's dead. Now, that turret might be onto us. We can get some cool information if we go to the scanner, but it might not be worth it. It's an interesting choice. I'm going to load. Is this guy going to hit us? Is the question. Issahar, you should start showing results in the internal system as soon as possible. You're conducting open combat operations, sacrificing many of our call nodes that could be useful at Saturn or in our business at uh, trans-Neptunian sites. You promised to strike a sensitive blow to realware and reveal the truth about ANCOM, but you did not strike realware, and your theory about ANCOM may be incorrect. You must conduct an immediate review of the rational use of resources in your sector, Leah. So, looks like the, may potentially the person who attacked us is getting in trouble from their superiors. Okay, so the scanner allows you to locate objects, um, and we can use this, and what this does is Depending on what's turned on for the scanner, you can now look at the map and see these things, and you can move this map around. So all of these green boxes are item containers, or items, that the scanner is showing us. So we can kind of get a layout of where things are, if we're interested. Um, and the scanner is, uh, it's nice to just be able to see that. Now, I would love to check this container, but I don't want to risk getting shot by the turret. So let's just run out here. Awesome. Okay, so if I push M to look at the map, this is us, we know where the steps are, and we're just kind of clearing through this area. One of the things I will tell you is that you don't always want to clear everything, like in some roguelikes my tendency is to just clear through everything, but in this game you will run out of food and run out of bullets a lot of the time if you try to do that, so you want to actually move at a reasonable pace, and then if you have time, you can loot Goblin. That's kind of the, the attitude that I take. All right, everybody. Well, this is a good look at our first real kind of mission, our revenge mission, and a good place to end the episode. In the next episode, we're going to kind of pick up here and continue clearing through this uh, revenge mission and see if we can finish it alive and build up Victoria. I hope you're still enjoying this guide series and finding it to be useful. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.